Hello, everybody. My name is Martin Ungenberger, and I'm the scientific director of Naval Labs Europe. The video you see here in the background is the introduction video of Naval Labs Europe. We are about 100 AI researchers coming from more than 25 different countries, and I'm here to present all of them. It's a great honor for me to speak to you today. Generative AI is changing the world. I think we all agree on that. But to be more precise, it's changing the digital world. Recently, we have all been talking about chatbots that behave like real humans, that offer the customer service, 24-hour um, operation, that never get tired, that are always polite, and that can answer any questions we might ask. We also see image generation tools that push the boundaries of creativity, not only for artists or, or designers, but they open up new, new opportunities for cre creative expression, even for people completely lacking these skills, like myself, as you can see here. This is the best I can do with my drawing skills. And this is what AI can do for my descriptions. The third example I want to give you are digital avatars that can be used to represent us in the virtual world. Thanks to AI, they look like us, they behave like us, and they even can do things we are not capable of doing in the real world. We have seen now three examples of how AI changes the digital world. But there is more. Then what if we apply AI to the physical world, to, ro to robotics, for example? Robots are getting smarter, more versatile, and they are ready to revolutionize industries. By infusing them with generative AI, we are enabling them to perform complex tasks completely autonomously. And this will transform various sectors, such as manufacturing, healthcare, logistics, and many more. What if we think even larger in scale and apply AI to create digital replicas of entire cities? This would be an interesting add-on to existing infrastructure, enabling data-driven decisions that change the face of urban planning, sustainability, and even will enable immersive extended reality experiences. At Naval Labs, we work in both of these fields, and I would now like to give you two examples of our technologies. So first, we have Naval's new headquarter building, 1784, where 100 robots daily serve coffee to the employees and deliver parcels directly to their desks. 5G technology and the central control system that we call Arc Brain enable the robots there to freely move in this building and to execute their tasks. The second example I want to give you is Neighbors Digital Twin technology that allows highly accurate 3D reconstruction of entire cities. And this enables services such as next generation city planning and can even enable autonomous driving. At Naval Labs, we have been pioneers in AI research and development for quite some time now. We knew the future that was coming and we have been preparing for it eagerly. We believe that AI is the key to unlocking unprecedented opportunities in the physical world, especially when it comes to robotics. At Naval Labs Europe, the European research hub specialized in, specialized in AI, we take an interdisciplinary approach to AI, making robots part of our daily life. And we do that along three pillars. In action, we develop, we develop methods that allow robots to execute tasks in their environment. In vision, we develop methods that perceive and understand the world around robots. And in interaction, we enable robots to interact and collaborate with humans, for example, using natural language. Starting around about two, two years ago, we began focusing on a comp new, complete new approach with the huge potential to accelerating AI. Foundation models. And since 2021, Naval Labs Europe has been transitioning almost all its projects uh, to be based on foundation models. Though it was not an easy decision to make, especially when foundation models did not hold nearly as much importance as they, 
as they do now. Still, we decided to take the leap. And currently, our researchers are working hard on a total of 11 foundation model-based projects across the group's vision, action, and interaction. Why? Why did we do this transition? To explain the reasons for this transition, we must discuss the limitations of traditional approaches to AI. Traditional approaches to AI typically consist of defining a specific problem, collecting relevant data, and then training a neural network that is able to provide a solution to this problem. This is all great, but when these AI models are applied in the real world, they end up facing countless different situations they have never seen before. These images you see here, these are all extreme examples, but these examples do happen in the real world. And because of this, the shift between training to deployment can result in unsafe and underperforming systems. From a business perspective, accommodating the diverse needs of individual users can be very difficult for platforms that serve millions of users, such as Neighbor. It is difficult because we would need to train a neural network to solve every single problem. To overcome these challenges, a new approach of foundation models emerged. It involves the training of a comprehensive model with broad knowledge from huge amounts of data and then adapting it for a specific task. In other words, foundation models will capture as much knowledge of the world as possible, significantly reducing the efforts in applying it to create new tasks. And this approach also empowers domain experts and end users to have more control over their AI systems. And it's a very promising approach to address limitations of traditional AI methods. The examples I showed in the introduction, they are all based on foundation models. And since foundation models are changing the digital world, we believe they will also change the way how robots will act in the physical world, enabling them to be become part of our everyday life. But first, let's have a look where we are with this right now. And we do that by putting the environment robots are operating in, in relation to the tasks they are executing. At the one end of the spectrum, we have robots executing quite simple tasks in uncontrolled environments, such as a robot vacuuming our home. At the other end of the spectrum, we have robots that execute very complex tasks in very controlled environments, such as um, robots assembling cars in factories. So, as can be seen in this diagram, if the complexity of a task uh, increases, it, the, the demands on the environment increase as well. The obvious question is, why is the top right part of this diagram empty? Or in other words, why cannot robots, robots execute complex tasks in uncontrolled environments? I would like to discuss two reasons for that. First, technologically speaking, it is extremely difficult to get a robot to autonomously perform a task. An uncontrolled environment basically means an unexpected environment. And if a robot executing a complex task is interrupted by an unexpected event, by an, in an unexpected environment, the response to it will be very complex. And this is why the more unexpected variables there are, the more limited a robot's task performance will be. Right now, the execution of complex tasks has to be carefully defined by experts. And this is only possible if we can also control the environment in order to reduce the chance of unexpected things to happen. The second reason is we cannot guarantee safety. It is undeniable that unexpected environments can lead to accidents. And a robot making a wrong decision can be quite harmful to itself, or even worse, to its environment. And this is why we only allow robots to execute very simple and low-risk tasks in uncontrolled environments where they operate close to humans. A potential solution to this problem is AI, in particular foundation models. We have seen earlier what amazing things AI and foundation models can do in the, in the digital world, and we are convinced that this, that this is the solution for the physical world as well. 
The intuition is that we can train a foundation model that encapsulates broad knowledge that, could, that can cope with unforeseen situations and that knows how to execute new tasks. It works for the digital world, so why hasn't, hasn't it been put in practice in the physical world? That's the question. So unfortunately, it's harder than it sounds. The complexity of the physical world is much higher than the complexity in the digital world, and there are various things to consider. To do this, I would like to add some more examples about differences between uh, foundation models in the digital and in the physical world. So first, the output such models create, they are not guaranteed to be true. And contrary to the digital world, this might have severe consequences in the physical world because somebody might get physically hurt. Second, in order to get a robot to execute a task, it has to make a series of decisions that all depend on each other. And there are very few foundation models for this purpose, and none of them for the physical world. Third, when it comes to computer vision, there is an overemphasis on semantics in the digital world, covering applications such as object detection, image classification, or face recognition. In the physical world, we are very much interested in geometry as well, but this research is underrepresented so far. To address all these challenges, we have been developed and we have been using COCO, our 3D vision foundation model. COCO takes images as input and it is able to understand geometry as well as semantics of the world visible in these images. Using images from a camera mounted on a robot, Coco can be used for several tasks relevant to this robot, but it can do even more. As Coco understands 3D, it can be used to create replicas of the physical world, or better known as digital twins. In order to make Coco understand the world in 3D, we first have to feed it with as much as information about the world as possible. And we do that by providing millions of image pairs, each of them showing the same scene from two different viewpoints. While one image is provided as is, we mask out large parts of the second one. And then we ask Coco to recover these missing areas. And if you think about it, this is only possible if Coco understands 3D. And once we have taught Coco to understand the world, we can now fine tune it for specific downstream tasks. One example of such a task of, of, how to, uh, of applying foundation models such as Coco would be to develop a model that can always understand its surroundings regardless of changes in, in environment, whether it be indoor, outdoor, urban, rural, everywhere. This would significantly improve a robot's adaptability in, in the complex physical world. Think about multiple robots all connected to the cloud. Using foundation models, we could enable them to move beyond familiar areas, providing services in many different places. Another potential application would be mobility. Foundation models can be a great solution to increase the robustness and the reliability of mobility services, even when information about the environment changes or is even incomplete. This is especially effective for very large-scale robot mo mobility applications where problems such as multi-robot routing, scheduling, navigation, logis logistics, and so on cannot be solved with traditional approaches to AI. Ultimately, we aim to enable robots to explore spaces like humans do, instead of relying on maps every time they want to go somewhere. We can also expect a huge shift in the way robots interact with humans. For robots, us humans are extremely complicated objects to understand. Imagine that we can get robots to comprehend human behavior and intent by using foundation models. This allows the creation of robot services that better understand people and can interact in a safer manner. Needless to say, this research is critical for the popularization of robots. We still have a number of problems to solve to ensure that robots operate better in the physical world. But through foundation models, the fundamental approach to these challenges has changed. Instead of single, a single model addressing a single problem, the foundation model approach allows the model to become a good starting point to quickly and effectively address new problems. And what does this entail for the future? A world where thousands of robots operate in the physical space, solving thousands of tasks in parallel. 
By focusing on foundation model, I believe Naval Labs has come the closest to realizing this vision. Even before the pivot to foundation models in 2021, we had been one of the best companies working on AI for robotics. And with this decision, we have been rapidly building up our technological advantage. Obviously, since this change, the performance of our AI models have massively improved thanks to foundation models. But much more importantly, research on foundation model allows us to use better synergies between researchers of different domains. To conclude, I would like to highlight the take home message. Foundation models for the physical world are a promising way to significantly expediting the research to make robots useful. With Naval Lab's broad AI and robotics knowledge, combined with our pipelines of real-world robot services for the 784 and the second DC project, uh, we bring technology beyond the research lab. And we have working on, and we will continue to work on, making robots useful for everybody in their everyday lives. Thank you very much. Thank you.